What's going on everybody? Jay Howe here. And in this Diablo 3 Monk video, we're going to go over the Yuliana 7-sided strike build heading into Season 6 in Patch 2.4.1. Cover the skills, the gear, and some general tips and tricks on how to best use this going into the next patch. For the skills, we're going to be looking at Way of the Hundred Fist with Assimilation, Dashing Strike with Blinding Speed, Seven-Sided Strike with Sustained Attack, Exploding Palm with Impending Doom, Mantra of Salvation with Agility, and Epiphany with Desert Shroud. For your passives, you're going to be looking at Mythic Rhythm, Beacon of Etar, Harmony, and The Guardian's Path. Now, looking at the skills in particular, Way of the Hundred Fist, each enemy hit with the third hit increases your damage by 5% for 5 seconds. So the general principle is you're going to go in, punch a bunch of things, heal up, and that's what things we're going to get to here in just a minute with the gear, but you're going to go in there, get this built up, and then go ahead and pop that 7-sided strike. Now, Dashing Strike with Blinding Speed. This one says gain 40% increased dodge chance, for 4 seconds after using Dashing Strike. Since this is on a relatively short cooldown, you should have this up 100% of the time to be able to have this increased dodge chance for that greater survivability in greater rifts. 7-sided Strike with Sustained Attack basically lowers the cooldown to 14 seconds, and it really makes this extremely viable. We'll take a look at the gear here in just a moment to show you how the 7-sided Strike is going to work and just how valuable this rune is. But obviously, you're going to go up there, way up the 100 Fist, and then move it on down to 7-sided Strike, blow up a bunch of things, and have this on a very short cooldown, and proc it over and over again. Exploding Palm with Impending Doom. This basically just says, hey, this is going to do a ton of damage, no longer causing them to bleed, but instead it's just going to cause them to explode as cold if killed within 9 seconds. And you're going to see this is going to be a thing of beauty. Mantra of Salvation with Agility. This, when it's active, you are going to gain 20% increased resistance to all elements for 3 seconds, plus you have the dodge chance as well. This is really good because you can keep this going as well as your dashing strike. And then Epiphany with Desert Shroud. Infuse yourself with sand, reducing damage taken by 50%. So we know that this is going to be the one in those tough fights that you'll be popping. Taking a look at the passives, every third hit from a spirit generator increases the damage of your next damaging spirit spender. And we already talked about 7-sided strike, and if you can increase that by 40%, Plus the damage buff from Way of the Hundred Fist, we're starting to come around to show just how effective this is going to be revolving around that 7-sided strike skill. Beacon of Etar, reduce all cooldowns by 20%. You want 7-sided strike around, and this is one really easy way to get it without having to put too much emphasis on your gear. Harmony, 40% of your single elemental resistances is going to increase all elements there. And so you can see this is a huge damage mitigating tool. It really bumps up the toughness. The Guardian's Path. While dual wielding, you gain a 35% chance to dodge incoming attacks. So you can see there's a ton of dodge in this build, and it's going to allow you to be in there swinging away with those fists and then also trying to dodge a bunch of stuff that's going to be coming at you in the meantime. So for the gear, first things first, let's take a look at the two-set bonus. Every third hit of your spirit generators applies Exploding Palm. Obviously, this is going to be the big one because you're going to be applying Exploding Palm to everything. Next up, Seven-Sided Strike deals double its total damage with each hit. Given that this is going to be on a short cooldown, as you can see, having that double damage is far more important, getting it a lot quicker than some of the other runes that we were looking at on the seven-sided strike. The six-piece bonus, increase the damage of your exploding palm by 250% and your seven-sided strike detonates your exploding palm. So you, the principle here is to spread your exploding palm on everything around you. When one dies, it's going to slowly explode everything or rapidly explode everything to create an amazing chain reaction. And that's why Yuliana's is so strong. Now, taking a look at the weapons, the lion's claw. The secondary affix there says seven-sided strike performs an additional seven strikes. And we already talked about it doing double damage. And if you're going to have this on short cooldown and it's basically doubling it up, you're looking at some pretty killer damage. The other weapon, the Fist of Az. If you take a look at the secondary affix on here, Exploding Palms on Death Explosion damage is increased between 250 to 300%. This is a huge damage increase when you talk about that. 
to be able to blow up the things in that area. Now, a key thing to note with these weapons is that it is best to have life on hit, life per hit there, so that when you're attacking with those rapid fists that you're actually healing up in the process. Taking a look at the jewelry, the compass rose and the Traveler's Pledge. While moving, damage taken is reduced, and while standing still, damage is increased. This is going to be good because you're going to get right into the thick of things, punch away, sustain yourself, be able to have all these abilities to survive, and then turn right around and do that more damage. The other ring we're going to be looking at is the Unity. Now, while you do have a ton of dodge, toughness is tough to come by here. You have quite a bit of it with the talent choices, but you still are going to need to have a unity on yourself and one on the Templar to be able to have that damage reduction to really push those high greater rifts. Now, speaking of damage mitigation, the belt. Binding of the Lost, the secondary affix here says each hit with seven-sided strike grants anywhere to... 3 to 3.5% 3 damage reduction for 7 seconds. We already talked about the frequency of your 7-sided strike and how often you're going to be using that and all the hits there. So you can see why having that damage reduction is pretty much crucial to the build. Now, there's two brazers here. Now, generally, one is going to go in the cube and one is going to go on your character itself. Now, generally, Gungdo gear is going to be the one you're wearing because Spirit Guards is going to be the one going into your cube. That's going to be another damage mitigating one. We'll talk about that in a second. But Exploding Palms on Death Explosion applies Exploding Palms. So when it explodes, it's going to spread it to everything around you. And we already talked about Exploding Palm basically chaining to everything here. It's now going to do more damage. And Seven-Sided Strike detonates Exploding Palms. So you can see this is almost like just a huge chain reaction between every bit of gear, every talent, and everything you're going to be picking up here. So you can see the huge synergy. Now, for the Yuliana set, remember you will need all six pieces, although you can tend to go away from it if need be to be able to hit that Ring of Royal Grandeur in your cube. However, all six pieces between the boots, pants, gloves, shoulders, helmet, and chest are all going to be important. Now, the basic stats are going to be around here. Nothing crazy. A little bit of cooldown reduction will go a long way with this build. But again, 7-sided strike, you'll see that once you start using it with that Beacon of Etar, it's going to be around pretty quickly. Now, taking a look at the Kanai's Cube, the Flow of Eternity. This one got changed. Increase the damage of 7-sided strike by 100%. And when it's in the cube, it's going to reduce the cooldown of 7-sided strike by 60%. That's why I said Beacon of Etar plus this right here in your cube. Now all of a sudden, 7-sided strike is on a huge cooldown. It's 14 seconds by default with that rune. But now all of a sudden, you have the Beacon of Etar and you have the Flow of Eternity reducing the cooldown on 7-sided strike, making it an absolute monster. And as we talked about for the armor slot, your spirit generators reduce your damage taken by 40% for 3 seconds. That's what it is in the cube. So your spirit generators, you're going to be using that again. You're going to attack with this, build up some damage, and then turn right around and use 7-sided strike once again. So it's a constant chain between these two abilities, and you're going to see that you're going to do a ton of damage with it. The jewelry slot, obviously, if you only have five pieces, Ring of Royal Grandeur. However, all six pieces, go ahead and throw a Convention of Elements into your cube, and you're going to be doing just fine to be able to do that increased damage. Taking a look at the Legendary Gems, Bane of the Powerful. This, again, is one. When you get those elites down, you're going to have the increased damage. And then you also now, in the secondary part of this, gain 15% increased damage against elites and take 15% reduced damage from elites. So it's working out well there. Bane of the Trapped, because you are going to be in that melee range, and you're going to be able to apply this extra damage, and it's too much damage to pass up. Lastly, Bane of the Stricken, because this is going to be huge once you get to those Rift Guardians and those bosses, and it's going to help you out quite a bit throughout the duration of the fight, especially when you talk about the high greater rifts, where you're going to have to spend more attacks on those enemies. This is going to help you clear them out even faster. So again, the main principles of this build are to simply go ahead, apply your attack there with your, your fist, your way of the 100 fist, be able to do damage, stack up a little bit, be able to get that damage reduction from your spirit guards, get that damage mitigation from your dashing strike with that dodge chance. Basically, everything that's going on here, you have your Mantra of Salvation, which is going to help as well. So you have all kinds of damage mitigating things that you can use at your side. Since Seven-Sided Strike is going to be there, it's going to spend some spirit. You're going to be just fine using your Mantra as well as your dashing strike to be able to keep up 
during those moments. The rotation is there. It's something you'll figure out by using dashing strike every few seconds. You'll see the rotation to be able to keep that dodge chance up, be able to use your mantra, and then at the same time continue to be able to use your way of the hundred fist. Rotate that over into your seven-sided strike with all the cooldown reduction between the flow of eternity. And so it's just a huge, huge amount of damage. And when you can start chaining them together, keep in mind that the bigger the group, the more explosion damage it's going to happen with that exploding palm. So the key here is to get into those groups, use the life on hit on your weapons to be able to stay alive, have enough toughness, be able to use all the skills to mitigate the damage there between the spirit guards in the cube, between your desert shroud, your dashing strike, all of that, and then go ahead and blow everything up and watch it just explode in front of you. So the huge chain reaction going to be coming in here from the monk. So that does it for this Diablo 3 Monk Guide heading into Season 6 and Patch 2.4.1. You're probably going to enjoy this a little bit more, especially with some of the updates going into this patch, as I know I certainly do, and it's much more fun to watch things blow up in quite the fashion. But you're now able to push higher, greater rifts and contend with the other Shenlong's build that's going to be out there. So be sure and share this with your friends. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, wherever you'd like, and send it out and say, hey guys, this is what's going on in Season 6, and hopefully I will see you guys there. As always, if you guys want to hit that like button, if you like the video, if you like the build, that's always appreciated. Till next time, happy hunting. See you again.